I won't talk any faster, but you'll have to listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Mark Wood, and I have a background as a UN Emergency Telecommunications Coordinator. And prior to that, I was a senior lecturer in cellular network design. Mm -hmm. So now I kind of put those two together, and I'm an expert in how cellular systems work during disasters. Now, I'm going to talk about cell broadcasting because I think it's the most important thing to be doing now. And uh, if you don't know much about cell broadcasting and you're making notes, these are the four things you should make notes about. You can forget anything else, but remember these four things. First of all, the cell broadcast system or area information feature that most mobiles already have built in. There's no need to build anything. By far the most of the world's mobile phones have an area information <coughs> facility built in. You'll have to hunt around in your menu to find it, but it'll probably be there. If it's not there, it means that it can be commanded on over the air, but most of them have one. So therefore, we don't need to spend years and hundreds of millions developing it. It just works straight away. It typically takes about a day to switch it on. Here's the critical thing. It's a downlink only true broadcast system. It means there's no limit to scale. You can talk to hundreds of millions at one time, and it will not crash the networks. It uses capacity not taken by calls, so it's immune to failures due to overloading, as always happens during disasters. So just to explain that briefly, there's a separate cell broadcast channel allocated in GSM for this purpose, but it streams downlink only. So it doesn't use a traffic channel to do this, so even if the system is fully blocked, it makes no difference. And interestingly, the signal is injected into the base station controller's maintenance facility. So even if the HLR, the VLR, the GMSC and the MSC have all crashed due to a tsunami of load, it doesn't make any difference. Cell broadcasting works perfectly well, even in full overload. Provided the infrastructure itself has not been destroyed, of course. We can target individual cells or towers, so it's geospecific. You can tell one village to evacuate, another to stay where they are. With the limitation that we can only get resolved down to the size of one cell. A cell is typically about uh, two or three kilometers across, so within those limitations, you can be relatively geospecific. What you don't want is 100 million people jamming your roads. What you want to do is tell the people who have got to run that they should run, and everybody else that they're safe to stay where they are. And with this technology, we can do that. We can even reach rumors. Because we're using the towers and we know where they are, we don't have a database to interrogate. So we'll get somebody, if, for example, if you're in this room today, your phone would go off and give you information that relates to this place, not to the place where you registered on the website. And it doesn't matter, wherever in the world you go, you get information from that local place about where you are now. We can secure it so that spammers and hackers and spoofers can't get in, only authorised government officials. Like I said, this is plugged into the maintenance channel on the base station controller, and that's not acceptable to the outside. If I send you an SMS text message that says, run like hell, sign my Mayor Bloomberg, you've got no idea whether that's true or false. But because of this, we can secure a CV message. You know it's really authentic when you see a CV message. Can you have the next slide, please? This is a basic diagram of how it works. On the left there, you see the senders, the police, and the mayor. There's some middleware which authorizes them, make sure it's authentic. And then copies get sent off to every different cellular company where the polygons resolved into individual cells so the right message comes out in the right place and we know it's come from the right source. More about that later. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. And what I'm doing now. This is the ITU uh, document. Uh, the ITU have at last agreed that they should be responsible for harmonizing this. When you go to switch on cell broadcasting on your mobile phone, the phone will ask you, what channel number would you like to turn on? And there are 64,000 of them, so you're not going to go hunting around. Really, you've got to know where it is. Some other things, if you use channel 112 in Europe, and then you travel to America, you'll be asleep in your bed dying because the Americans will transmit on channel 911. And if you go to China, they'll probably transmit uh, spam on that channel. So what we have to do is have an agreement whereby we say that the range from 900 to 999 are for civic emergency alerts. And from 800 to 899, the civic advisories, non-alerts, like the main road's going to be closed and the common things coming to the town, whatever you want to say. The users can never switch off or on channels above 1,000. So the 10,000 range is for mandatory messages like presidential level messages and we're going to war and all that kind of thing. Here are examples of what we have done so far. There are several countries are using it already, and Korea is using it already, Turkey is using it already, and Holland. Mr. Wim van Sessen, please raise your hand up there. Mr. Wim van Sessen, one of the world's leading experts on cell broadcast, is managing projects in Holland. Very successful, thank you to you. 
making my job a lot easier <laughs> because I can actually say yes, it works somewhere and you can tell you about it. And the Dutch are using it, uh, as you see, they're using Channel 920. At the present time, the Americans have a system in Wisconsin under test and they're using Channel 921 for English. So the idea is that you could have one different channel number for every language, or maybe we don't, maybe we have the same channels used for every language. This is something that's still under discussion. That concludes my presentation, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you.